Exercise 14F on exact values of circular functions. Now, over the last couple of lessons, we looked at finding values for multiples of pi on 2, right? Pi on 2 really helps us because we can find easily, well, it's either going to be 1, 0, or negative 1, particularly when it comes to sine and cosine. So, for example, sine of pi, we know we go all the way to pi and to look at what the y value is, okay? But what happens if we're given an angle that isn't exactly 90 degrees or a multiple of 90 degrees? Right? So we use something we call exact values, uh, exact values tables, or we use special triangles. So these are very specific angles that we very frequently work with in order to apply them in our understanding. Those angles being, well, of course, zero, you guys already know, but specific, specifically the ones in the middle of the table. So 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. Or in other words, pi on 6, pi on 4, and pi on 3. Those three angles you guys are going to end up very, very, very familiar with over the next couple of lessons. Okay? Now, there's two ways of remembering it. Now, I have a, a personal bias for one of these methods, but there are two ways of remembering it. First one is very obvious. Just memorize the table. If you memorize the table, you know, for example, sine at 30 degrees is half. Or sine at 45 degrees is 1 root 2. I, I don't like memorizing tables. I've told you guys... Very openly, I have a terrible memory. So I do something called an exact values triangle. I create a special triangle to find out these values here. I'm not going to go through the table in too much detail. It's pretty straightforward. Sine of 30, use that, we'll use the table. But for exact value triangles, what I can do is I can create those triangles from scratch in order to find those angles and use my understanding of trigonometry from year 9 and 10 in order to find angles, so find values at specific angles. So, let's start with the most basic triangle there is. So, I'm going to create a right angle triangle, of course, right angle, because we're using trigonometry. And we know that if this is 90 degrees, and the other two angles are the same, what are the other two angles? 45. Thank you very much, 45 degrees. I'm going to write it as pi on 4. So, if I have pi on 4, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the side length, because I have a hypotenuse, I'm going to set the side length as 1. If I know the side lengths are 1, what's the length of my hypotenuse? Pythagoras. What's the length of my hypotenuse? Square root 2, thank you. Square root 2. So we just add the two lengths, right? 1 squared plus 2 squared, or square root. Hopefully you guys remember Pythagoras' theorem. So we end up with root 2. With this, I can tell you what sine, cosine, tan, or whatever it is, of 45 degrees is, or of pi on 4. I can say, for example, let's try to find sine of pi on 4. Sine of pi on 4, I know, remember, is opposite over hypotenuse, right? So opposite is going to be this one right here. So 1 over hypotenuse, which is root 2. So we end up with 1 over root 2. If you look at our table up here, 1 over root 2. So it gives us the same value, it's just not as a table. We can use a triangle. Now, you'll probably notice the only angle we're working with is pi on 4. What happens if we need pi on 6 or pi on 3? Well, we create another triangle. There are two triangles, by the way. So the other triangle, uh, you don't have to do this every time, but this is how I do it. We start with a triangle that's equilateral, so all the sides are the same. I cut it down the middle, and what I do is I label each side as a unit of 2. So this is 2, that's 2, and intuitively, if I've cut it down the middle, these are both 1. Now, using Pythagoras' theorem, and this is something you can do in an exam situation if you're under pressure, uh, using Pythagoras' theorem, I know that's root 3, right? Because it's uh, 2 squared equals to 1 squared plus, in this case, three square root of 3 squared again. So we end up with that. Now, if that's been split in half, we know, of course, that this is 90 degrees, and this value is going to, this value right here, is going to be twice as big as this value right here. Yeah, makes sense, right? Because we cut it in half. Uh, so this one here is pi on 3. Pi on 3, so 60 degrees. And of course, this one up here, oops. This one up here is going to be pi on 6 because it's half of pi on 3, so it's going to end up being 30 degrees. We've got our special triangle here. We can focus on this triangle here in order to find what our values of, of 
sine or cosine of whatever angle that we want for these two specific angles. So let's say I want uh, cosine of 60 degrees. Or in other words, let's do cosine of 60 degrees, which is pi on 3. Once again, I use my understanding of trigonometric ratios. I know that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Hopefully you guys remember that stuff as well. So adjacent would be, because I'm focusing on this angle, adjacent would be this line right here. So 1 over my hypotenuse, which is 2. So I would go back up here and I can compare cosine of 60 degrees is half. So this is something that you can, all you need to remember is the triangle itself or how to create the triangle. Uh, and you don't need to memorize the whole table. Now, obviously in an exam two situation, when you have your calculator, when you have your resource books, you don't need to memorize any of this. But in exam one, you are definitely expected to know these angles here. So for some of you, it's a memorization game. Some of you, it's just knowing how to draw the triangles. I personally prefer the triangles. You won't lose marks for, uh, for picking one or the other, right? So there'll never be a question that tells you to draw these triangles out, but it's very important that you either memorize the table or you know how to draw these triangles out, okay? Now, just keeping in mind, over here, I've just included this in your notebook as well, we can fill in the gaps. So this one over here is going to end up being pi on six because it's our smallest special angle. Pi on 6, remember, because we know the cosine and the sine value, I can say, okay, well, cosine of pi on 6 is going to be our x value. So cosine of pi on 6, which is this one here, root 3 on 2. So I know that point has an x value of root 3 on 2. If I look at the y value, which is a sine value, I go back up here, sine of pi on 6 is half. And so I know that point has a coordinate of root 3 on 2, half. That's how we use the uh, exact values. I believe I included questions here. Sweet. So I've included questions here. What I want us to do, us to do is go through these questions applying our new understanding of, of, of the exact values. So I've got cosine of 150 degrees. If I was to convert that to radians, now you don't have to do this by any means, but I'm going to convert to radians because I like radians a bit more. So I'm going to say that's cosine 150 degrees is the same as Let's, you know, let's keep it as degrees first. 180 minus 30 degrees. Are we okay with that? Yeah. And then that gives us cosine of pi minus pi on 6. So all I've done is we said, okay, 150 degrees. Let's, let's try to keep it and anchor it to a point on the horizontal line. I know it's like 180 minus 30, not like it is. Um, and then I changed into uh, our angle here. So cosine of pi minus pi on 6. Okay, I'm thinking to myself, all right, well, I know cosine of pi minus pi on 6. Pi minus pi on 6. That's the second quadrant, isn't it? Because I'm going all the way from here to pi minus pi on 6. So it's in the second quadrant, which means that I know my value is going to be negative. Or I know because this angle here is also in pi on 6, isn't it? And the x value of this point here is going to be the same as that point, but reflected. As we said, it's going to be the negative version. So, I know it's the same as negative cosine of pi on 6. Which, if we refer back to our table or use our triangles, whichever it is, you end up with a value of negative root 3 on 2. Okay? I'll go through one more example and then I'll let you guys get started with sine one, uh, so 11 pi on 6. Same thing, I want to try and anchor it to a point, and then we'll continue from there. So sine 11 pi on 6, I know, is the same as so 12 pi on 6 minus pi on 6. Would you guys agree with that? Happy with that? Yeah? 12 pi on 6, I can simplify. I know it's sine of 2 pi on, minus pi on 6. Once again, I'll refer back to the unit circle to try and figure out which quadrant it's in. So I'm going to go back up to here and say, okay, well, 2 pi minus pi on 6. So 2 pi would be all the way around, all the, all the way around, and then I'd minus, I'd minus pi on 6. Right, I go back pi on 6. So it's in quadrant 4. Quadrant 4, sine is not positive, so I know it's going to be the negative of sine pi on 6. Okay, now sine pi on 6, I go back up here, I say, okay, well, sine pi on 6 is going to be, so sine, and then I go pi on 6, half, so I go down back here, and I say negative 
half. And I'm done. So we use the exact values triangles or the tables in order to apply the same things we've been doing before, but with very specific angles. 